Happy New Year's, Nets fans, and welcome to another episode of the Brooklyn Buzz presented by OTGBasketball.com. I'm your host, Nick Fay. No Jack today, but special guest, Harris Wishard, my good friend. How are you doing, Harris? Happy New Year, Nick, first of all. And, you know, thank you for having me. And we go way back. I call us the podcast Godfathers. Because <laughs> I know there's a bunch of them now, and you guys have had a lot of success, which is great to see because you're passionate, you know, and, and putting a lot of work, and it's, and it's well-deserved. So, Definitely uh, appreciate you having me on, talk a little Nets net basketball. And uh, I know you're happy because you were in attendance last night with that W. Yes, sir. I appreciate that, Harris. And, you know, obviously big impact in helping OTG podcast getting started. So shout out to Harris. But like you said, last night, pretty excited to be in Barclays. Start off the new year with my girlfriend, my favorite person in my favorite place, Barclays Center. 98-95, Nets win. Karis LeVert came up big. Jared Allen came up big. Just a bench unit. You know, just a good team effort after kind of a slow game. Pretty impressive. I was happy about it. What were your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, obviously not beating a great team, but, you know, it's it's still anytime uh, you execute in the fourth quarter of an NBA game uh, with young guys and, uh, and the Nets have struggled a little bit closing out games, as you know. Um, so it, it's still, it's still a, um, I think, a feel-good win. Um, like I said, not a great opponent, but... Um, the thing that's always that continues to stick out for me in that games is the effort of Levert off the bench. We talked about it like this guy obviously could be starting um, playing a little bit better than Dinwiddie right now, who had his, his stretch too. But for Levert to develop, you know, taking uh, his 15 shots off the bench and still keeping his assist numbers up, so a nice balance in the Nets offense, and definitely impressed with what I've seen from Levert of late. Yeah, for sure. Levert's definitely been a bright spot, especially in December. He's really stepped up. But like you said, feel good win, 14th win. It took the net 70 games last year to get to this point. Wow. Also, yeah, so big, impressive. And then obviously winning on the first night of you know 2018 on the back to back, which is always nice too. But like you said, Levert's development has been huge for the Nets. You know, all the success they've had recently has had a big part of Levert. You know, his impact on the game has fell on both ends offensively he's developed into this nice point guard like I mentioned to you before you know off air with Dinwiddie I mean with uh D'Angelo Russell and Jeremy Lin going down it kind of for, forced Levert into that role and he's really developed in that role he's a lot more poised he does a great job of absorbing the defense and getting hitting the open man especially Jared Allen yeah and and we knew we speak about this often and giving guys opportunities a lot of careers in this league start off you know other guys going down or other guys not playing well and other guys getting opportunities and I think you know, this case in point here with this Nets team, uh, guys like Allen, guys like Levert, um, you know, ne not necessarily, you know, top tier lottery players, but, you know, getting the job done and getting opportunity on a team that's in, in, in all likelihood not going to make the playoffs, but, you know, is going to continue to develop under, you know, Atkinson. And what I want to ask you about is, you know, some of this late, you know, game execution, some of, uh, obviously not Atkinson's fault, so to speak, but I want to hear your impressions on the job he's done over the last couple of weeks. You know, I think you have to be happy with it. Some Nets fans are a little upset at the rotations at times. And, yeah, sometimes it's tough. But I think we also have to remember the roster that he's working with. You know, there just isn't a ton of talent. The front court is pretty weak in terms of, you know, power forward and center position. So doing the job he's done, getting the Nets to 14 wins without arguably their two best players in D'Angelo Russell, Jeremy Lin, definitely is impressive. And like you said, the development of a Karis LeVert and a Jared Allen, both not lottery picks, but still able to turn into good players so far, good role players. What they did with a guy like Joe Harris, Damari Carroll kind of revitalizing his career. So I think, you know, overall, I love the job that Atkinson's done. I also love the job that Sean Mark's done. So just the whole organization is, you know, in a complete, you know, 180 from where they were at before. Yeah, and you just want to keep them competitive. They've had a couple blowout losses over the last few weeks or so, but, you know, competitive against Golden State, beat the Thunder, competitive against the Celtics twice, nice win in Portland earlier in the year. So the thing that kind of sticks out for me right now is this team is just competing. And when you get, you know, several players under 30, I think I heard a stat like the Bulls, and there was another team that doesn't have a player on their roster uh, under 30, uh, over 30. The Nets don't have a lot of them. And one of the veterans that has stuck out to me is Damari Carroll. Yeah, Carol, like I mentioned, coming over in that Toronto Raptor trade, coming with a first and second round pick was great. And he's really been that leader on the team with Jeremy Lin going down, that veteran leadership. And he's had some nice plays down the stretch and really helps the team. He seems like he's had some nice big moments at home. So, And I was just going to um, point to that about the home uh, schedule. Now that they got the next four, this was, you know, obviously last night, five in a row at home, an opportunity going into the new year, turn the calendar, start afresh and try to build some confidence. Usually young players build their confidence on their home floor, and the Nets have the opportunity to do that. 
Yeah, definitely a tough stretch with some good teams, but if they're able to pull off some wins, it'll be impressive. And just like, you know, with any team like this, like you said, not playoff bound, you're looking for the development in the players. So long as Karis LeVert keeps making strides, Jared Allen, Joe Harris, you know, Spencer Dinwiddie, Rondé Hollis Jefferson, just everybody on the roster just continuing to get better. Allen Crabb kind of getting out of a shooting funk would be nice as well. So I think there's plenty of bright spots to look at. Yeah, it's it's crazy because I don't want anyone to think I'm a net tater. You know, I, I send some uh... – you know, crazy text your way, but that ha- that developed in college when I was just hanging around some Net fans, and you know this from being around some Nick fans that are kind of delusional, and it kind of impacts you know how positive or negative you are towards that team and being the little brother, even though the Nets have had more success over the last 15 years. But you know, playing alongside the Knicks and the Mecca, you know, it can be a little tough, um, and some people don't pay attention to the team. But in all seriousness, though, I mean, I think they have the better coach. And I think they have some young talent also to develop, as we've alluded to. Um, so ni- obviously nice to get the W, but I'm actually more impressed by staying uh, within three in Boston the other night. Yeah, within three in Boston the other night and the game before that, a blowout in Miami, which is impressive. So that game in Boston, other than a slow start in that first quarter, you know, the Nets probably could have walked away maybe with a W. They had it within three late in that game. Maybe at home they pull it away. And also, Alan Crabb doesn't shoot two of ten from three. You have a better chance, but no complaints on this end from an impressive effort in Boston. Yeah, and I, I, one of the better half court defensive teams in all of basketball, and to have three of your four quarters twenty eight plus, that's impressive. And this yeah. isn't known as like a great offensive team, but they do play with some pace. The Nets. Anytime you know doing the daily fantasy and you're looking for you know who the Nets play, not just because they give up a lot of points, but they score and they got some guys. Um, and, and, and I, I give uh, Atkinson a lot of that credit of guys that play confidently because he really doesn't put the clamps on anybody. Yeah, he really unlocks players. Like, for example, yeah. Tyler Zeller. Who the hell would have shot Tyler Zeller was going to shoot threes? And yeah. Tyler Zeller has been a solid, not an amazing, he's not shooting a ton of threes, but once in a while he'll knock one down. What he did with Brooke Lopez last season, Jared Allen's even shot a couple threes. So I wouldn't be surprised to see, you know, players really unlock their game in Brooklyn. Even a guy like Dinwiddie who – was borderline in the league, and now all of a sudden they're making him a valuable player where he'll probably be around the league as at least a backup guard for quite some time. And he'll it will be great for his reputation if he can get, you know, this team over 500 and back into the right direction at some point. But we talk about, like, giving D'Antoni that credit for, like, the seven seconds or less and then bringing it to uh, Houston and, and then, you know, having some success, obviously, with Phoenix, trying it in New York. But you're going to have some successes. You're going to have some failures. But a lot of people respect him. And, you know, obviously unlocking Len Sanity four or five years ago and, and trying to bring that same success uh, into Brooklyn. So I think that's going to have a lot to do with in the style of their play. Because over the last two years, this Nets team, and you could t- uh, tell them t- tell the folks out there that like this team better than me, it's just, it just felt stagnant. And it felt like guys weren't playing with enough confidence and guys weren't um, playing to their full potential. Yeah, I mean, you definitely could feel the culture change when Sean Marks and Kenny Atkinson took over, and I think that's something that's probably overused a little bit, but it really did change because the Nets team of old was just kind of always down. It wasn't high energy. You're just a lot of high energy effort guys, and they're always competing. They're always in games. If they lose, it's most likely not because they didn't try hard. It's because they're missing shots or missing assignments or just, you know, outmatched. Yeah. So I- it's something a lot more positive than when you have guys, when you're the more talented team and lose, when you have a team with a Darren Williams and Joe Johnson and Brooke Lopez and you get blown out instead of, you know, a guy, a team full of young guys who are just going at it and losing by three to Boston. Yeah. And listen, it's not, it's not a group of world beaters. We know that it's not the most impressive roster in the world, obviously dealing with the injury bug, but you know, another positive six guys in double figures on the road against a good team. Uh, something I just looked at now, which is, you know, very impressive, but, at the same time, with Russell out and now adding Okafor as the you know the piece that it's it's the mystery box. It's it's not quite as mystery as our as our boy Beasley across town, but <laughs> it's a, it's a mystery box. And now you have two of the four uh, players um, that went in the top uh, four picks of that 2015 draft. Nick. Yeah, I think that's very impressive. I think D'Angelo, obviously, I'm more excited about in his potential and what he can be, but Okafor still could be another nice, solid contributor. Supposed to get his, you know, first appearance at Barclays tomorrow night against the Timberwolves, so that'll be interesting to see. I'm really intrigued on how he'll fit into the team. The Nets haven't really had a ton of, you know, low post scorers or guys who don't really shoot the ball a ton. Obviously, his effort and his defense are going to be big factors in how many minutes he'll play because Tyler Zeller's not amazing, but he does the small things, and Allen's not going to lose minutes. 
No, absolutely not. And I think it's interesting because how extinct is, you know, he, he was the, you know, the, the saying the missing puzzle piece, but he was kind of the odd man out in Philly, right? Because they have that whole trust the yep. process and all the young players. He was the odd man out, you know, being the lottery pick. But there's nothing better than having a guy on your team that's hungry, ready to prove that he's still um, of that caliber. And I think that's what's working in his favor. Forget the ta- forget the skill set. Forget the fact he might be inept on the defensive end. I think the fact that he's hungry, the fact that he wants to get back on the floor and prove to people um, that he's still that kind of player is something really working in the Nets' favor right now. Yeah, anytime you have a chip on your shoulder, and you could argue this team is a Nets team full of misfits. You know, a lot of guys who've been all over the place, you know, D'Angelo Russell getting shipped out of L.A. quick, Okafor, just a couple guys. And then, like you mentioned, the non-lottery picks, guys just missing out. You know, they remember that type of stuff. So I think that kind of adds into the fire for the Nets and helping them have that constant competitiveness. Definitely, definitely looking forward to seeing what he does because the the low post presence of anybody is kind of, you know, the, the current NBA moving away from that and having a guy that you can throw it to um, to get you an easy bucket is not really something they have had. And I think it will open up some perimeter shooting. Um, like you said, Crab did struggle um, the other night. But they, for, for the most part, you know, Levert obviously could shoot a little bit. And I can't believe AC made a couple of three. That, that, that was an anomaly the other night, I feel like. He's but, hot and cold, man. He, yeah, he's he, either ice cold or he's yeah. super hot. There's no in between for Quincy AC. But a lot of guys on the team do feel comfortable stepping out. And, you know, having a guy that, that could touch it, you know, inside 10 feet. Is going to help those guys too. Yeah, I agree. I think you uh, you don't you talk about spacing. Everyone always thinks three point shot, but inside spacing where you're sucking the defense in and opening up you know more open shots for threes. And at some points this season, the Nets have had trouble getting open from three. Teams are kind of closing out and realizing you know they don't have a ton of great drivers or inside scorers, so we can take advantage. So Okafor could really add that impact. Before we get out of here, though, Harris, what has been the most impressive factor of this Brooklyn Nets team to you from an outsider's perspective? I think it's the ability to remain positive and competitive, and I think that starts at the top. When you've had adversity, um, and the, and a lot of teams around the league suffer from the injury bug, but this team obviously got it bad in the fact that they lost probably their two best playmakers, as we, as we have alluded to. But the ability to stay competitive, I feel like every night I turn on the game, um, and they're within six or up six, down six, a you know, couple possessions either way. And I think that that fight and, and uh, that no-quit attitude that a lot of them have adopted uh, adopted from, you know, a guy like Demore Carroll, you know, veteran, you know, has some playoff experiences. We know what kind of player he is. But I feel like a couple rough-around-the-edges players, you know, like not polished offensive guys that are ISO players, you know, a, a cohesive group that's been competitive. Yeah, I agree. I think from an outsider perspective, you wouldn't think the Nets would be here at this point. And even with the injuries, I don't even myself, I'm kind of surprised they have 14 wins, losing a Russell and a Jeremy Lin, two of your biggest playmakers. Just guys have stepped up and guys are continuing to get better as the season progressive, which is always something nice to see. You know, it's not stagnant. The development keeps keeps happening and the team keeps getting better. Yeah. And, you know, something I wanted to ask you in, in, a, in a season where you're not going to have your first round pick potentially could be a top 10 pick, but what are you expecting? What do you want to see out of this group that, you know, I think, you know, the, 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 the tremendously optimistic net fan would say, oh, let's try to stay in it. Let's try to, you know, grab that eight seed. The pessimistic fan, I'll say this team is 25 wins at best. So I think you have, you know, something somewhere in the middle probably, but what are your expectations? Um, you know, probably what do we have now? About 50 games left, you know, a little less than that, but, you know, almost halfway point, what are your expectations going forward? I mean, I just expect the Nets compete, play hard, play the right way. If they get outmatched by better teams talent wise, and long as they put in the effort, it's like I said, if they miss shots, it's not a big deal. As long as they're, you know, putting in the effort and focusing and trying hard, like I can't complain about that. Young guys are getting minutes. You know, you want to see D'Angelo, you want to see Levert, you want to see Allen, Rondé, you know, Allen Crabb, Okafor. You just want to see a lot of the young guys get play, but you also want to make sure they're playing the right way. So that's why I don't mind seeing Damari Carroll. They're not going to push for the playoffs, so I don't think that really matters. I think 30 wins is kind of, you know, somewhere in that 30, 30 to 35 range is what to expect. And I think that'd be a really successful season considering the injuries. Well, you know what? I, Levert, you know, is, is something to be really excited about. And he's, you know, one of probably, you know, the, my favorite net to watch right now. But I'll always show love to Rondé Hollis Jefferson and nice enough to chop it up with me a little bit. So I'm at a bar in Freeport a couple years ago. This is at the, you know, very beginning of his career, nice guy, 
uh, seems to be well liked by his teammates and starting to develop his offensive game. So they have some, you know, young, likable guys. He's and, taking a real big step this year. Yeah. You know, offensively, yeah. he went from being probably one of the biggest question marks, you know, on the team. Can he contribute 10 points a game? And now he's consistently producing, you know, around 15 a night, working in that post mid range, taking advantage of mismatches. I think he's going to continue to get better and kind of understand the game a little bit more, which I think is really going to help the Nets because he can compete on both ends. And, and versatility. I have a New Year's resolution that is to stop hating on the net so much because of how much <laughs> respect I have for you. And, you know, obviously appreciate you having me on. I know how passionate you are about your teams, especially the nets. So my, my, I will not be sending as, as many hateful and um, sarcastic net uh, texts and tweets towards you. Um, that's, that's one of my top five resolutions of the NBA season. I appreciate that. And the Nets have done a good job of making it a little bit harder. You know, they're they're a little bit more likable and they're a little bit better now. So it's like, you know, but Harris, thank you for hopping on. You can always listen to the Brooklyn Buzz on iTunes, Blog Talk Radio and OTGBasketball.com. Happy New Year, everyone, and go Nets. Enjoy Nets basketball.